Today's message is called A Serious Pioneer. And we're going to go over a little history right away. Hope I don't bore you too bad. I believe I'll, I'll teach you something if you're willing to learn this morning about our history. Keep going. What is a pioneer? A pioneer is the first person to do something. Say that with me. A pioneer is the first person to do something. Okay? It's one who prepares. This is how the Webster's Dictionary. I carry that little dictionary right in my, my desk drawer, second drawer down. This thing's helpful to me. The Bible and Webster, man, I appreciate it. Listen, it's one who prepares the way for others. A pioneer is an early settler, or I like this, this definition right here, a what? An adventurer. Amen? So we're going to look at a pioneer today, a serious pioneer. Let's go with it, Rod. Here's some Florida history. Where did we come from down here in this state? Well, President James Monroe accepted Florida from Spain in 1821, just in case you're wondering where it came from, because everything comes from somewhere, amen? So it came from Spain in 1821. President Monroe named Andrew Jackson, later who became our seventh president, to be Florida's first territorial governor. Amen? So there you go. How many learned something already? See, you done learned two things this morning. Come on. Here we go. In 1845, Florida became, say it with me, the 27th state to join the Union. Amen? That's where we came from. Now, it remained largely a frontier wilderness until the early 1900s. I tell you, that's not that long ago, guys, to be honest with you. Especially where? Our what? Especially us. Okay? Many who first came here, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. They were Georgians and Carolinians. Amen. Do we have any of those in the house? How many? We got like five of us or seven of us or nine of us in the building here this morning. Amen. But I tell you what, we didn't last very long. You know why? We were escaping the pending civil war, but we eventually moved back to the north. You know why? We were disenchanted. You know why? i tell you why. Because we were scared of Indians. I'll tell you that right now. We were scared of Indians. I'm telling you, Florida being Indian country, all right, it's commonly associated with the Seminole tribe, but it was mostly the Calusa that roamed this area. And the old Carolinians in here at night, they were like, honey, we're getting out of here. And so they moved back north. You listening to me? So that's Florida's history. A little bit of where we came from. How about Inglewood? Let's bring it a little closer to home. We're talking about pioneers today. We have pioneer days here. How many have been to some stuff on Dearborn Street? Pioneer days. Well, what is all that about? Pioneers, what is it? Well, Inglewood is unique, especially it's a two-county town. We're split between Sarasota County and Charlotte County. And for years, I don't want to get off on this, but that kept us from getting anything done around here. Okay? But some of us who've lived here sort of like that. I'm sorry. Anyway, no, it kept us for getting... I remember years ago when I first came here, we had one policeman. He wasn't ours. Sarasota. Charlotte, I hardly saw Charlotte in this neck of the woods. But Sarasota, if you wanted to do a crime in Sarasota, it's pretty simple. On the Sarasota side of Inglewood, he would come down 776, which was a two-lane road, and then he'd make that little left-hand turn and go back up Dearborn Street headed towards Northport. So if you saw him come through and he made that left, you got about an hour. <laughs> that all changed a few years ago. We got some policemen that started hanging out down here, and they got offices off of Orange Street. I remember when Charlotte County sent us six, we were going to have six dedicated officers to this whole area, you know, this area. I remember when that happened. So anyway, it's sort of funny. But Inglewood, a two-county town on Florida's west coast, it was settled in the late 1800s by, by who? Pioneers like William Goff. How many know some of the Goff family? Can I see your hand? I do as well. And uh, every time I go to get my tags, anything done at the title agency, one of the golf girls runs that, that business, that part of the county over there. And uh, anyway, and my kids grew up with, with some of the family. So pioneers like William Golf, who opened a trail from El Jabin to Vineyard. What's Vineyard? Well, that was Dearborn Street. 
We opened a trail down this way, and I guess that neck of the woods was called Vineyard. And Lauren Anger, or Anger, who set up a store to serve area fishermen. And so we have Anger Middle what? Sure we do. In 1884, Herbert Nicholas of Inglewood, Illinois. Uh-oh, seeing a connection. And his two brothers, they came to the area with the intention of growing what? Lemons. Thus you have little towns, little, not towns, but little segments of our community like Grove what? Grove City, full of lemons and stuff like that. That's what this area was all about. They named the town what? In remembrance of their what? Their, how many never knew that? Can I see your hand? Okay, there you go. Now let somebody lie to us on this history because I'm just quoting it like it's the stuff. Amen, here we go. The original plat of Inglewood. What is Inglewood really? And what's the original plat? Well, it stretched, if you know this old downtown area, it stretched on the north side to Stewart Street. Okay? Now the south side of, of uh, Inglewood was Dearborn Street. Now Dearborn's sort of like the middle of Old Inglewood. No, it wasn't in the day. It was the south side of Inglewood. Got it? How far east did it go? Went to Elm Street down to the, to the bay. Amen? So that was Inglewood. So now you know some of that. The Nicholas Brothers, 24-block community remained agricultural through the 1940s since the Tamiami Trail passed east of the peninsula. And I guess the governor in the late 1920s and 1930 promised us and promised to people who, who were in the Inglewood area that, that he would never pass us up when 41 went through here. Guess what the politician did? Somebody take a wild guess. Yeah, that's what happened. But you know what? People hated it back in the day, but I sort of like it now that 41 doesn't run through Inglewood. Come on! Not bad, is it? Come on, things will have a way of working out if you hang in there, guys. Come on. Inglewood is now almost 110 years old, though artifacts at the Indian Mound Park. Now, that's where I live. I live over that way. I miss where my home is. You know that I, I still have is over there and dates back as far as a thousand BC to around 1350 AD so Indians it's not known whether the mound was built by the Calusa or the Timucua Indians since it was very near the border between where these two ancient Indian tribes lived amen so how many learned something about Inglewood history this morning there we go all right thought I came to hear the Bible preacher I'm sure I'll hear some criticism later we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Amen? But we're doing something. We're pioneers at Fellowship Church. I think it's important you know where you come from and what you're, what you're going toward and what, what we're facing. Amen? Come on. How about Rotunda? Now, if you really want to get some entertainment, check this out. Are you all ready? How many live in Rotunda? You live in Rotunda. Okay, there you go. There you go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see if we can teach you something. Here we go. In 1850, the Swamp Lands Act, I'll tell you something right there, gave all of Florida land to the state. And in 1855, the Tallahassee legislature vested five trustees with the authority to sell it all off. The first recorded sale of what is now Rotunda came in 1885 to the Gainesville, Ocala, and Charlotte Harbor Railroad. So they bought this big chunk of land. Now before 1951, much of Rotunda land sold in small little parcels, but by then all of what is now Rotunda was consolidated and owned by one company. Say it with me. Morse Realty Company Corporation. Okay? That's who owned it. Nothing's been done there. It's just land. Here we go. That wasn't that long ago, was it? That year, Alfred and William Vanderbilt. How many heard some Vanderbilts before? There you go. Acquired 36,000 acres for $700,000. And they started a 26,000 acre cattle ranch. Matter of fact, they sold the first 10, they sold 10,000 acres right away. And probably got their money back for their investment. And then they put this 26,000 acre cattle ranch. They developed a fresh water plant. And they built homes where? At Cape what? Hayes East. So those are the first homes that were developed in that rotunda area, Cape Hayes East. 
They owned it for a while, but cattle became, it wasn't that profitable. It was probably not what they were about anyway. They sold out in 1969 to Kavanaugh Leasing Corporation for how much? Could the Vanderbilts make money or what? And in 1970, a surveyor stuck a stake at the site of the 5 million gallon reservoir. How many knew how many gallons it would hold? Now you know. How many didn't know, but now you know? That big water tank, 5 million gallon reservoir. There you go. Come on. Declaring it the what? Center of a new community called Rotunda West. By the way, I don't have it on the screen. Was there a Rotunda East? Yes. It's not the Rotunda East you know. It was Rotunda East on the other side of Florida. And Kavanaugh owned that over there, but he couldn't get the water rights to drain it out. The Army Corps of Engineers wouldn't help him, so it was, it was just, it died before it ever got started. So he came over here, and that's why it's called Rotunda what? West. So if you're looking for an East, really, it's way over yonder. I don't know where it is. Palm Beach County, I guess. Keep looking. Kavanaugh, CEO. This is interesting. I think I found out the reason why nothing's ever been done in the middle of Rotunda. No, really. I think I found out the answer. Kavanaugh, CEO, Joe Klein liked the idea of a round community. Why is Rotunda round? I want to tell you why it's round. Because Joe Klein liked the idea of it. That's it. Sorry if that's disappointing to you. It may be apocryphal that Klein said. Here's what Klein said. If we build it square, fewer people would come here. That's brilliant right there now. Truth, this is the truth. Romantic is what? No, I mean, I'm sorry. Rounder is what? And more what? Roger says, that's right, baby. <laughs> Amen, baby. Here you go. But listen, so when you get lost in Rotunda now, just remember how much you love in it. Can you believe that? Yeah. Who would have thunk it? So Rotunda is a unique circular community at its core, and that's why it is, guys, draining outwards into the Rotunda River system. Okay, keep looking. I'm almost done. I'm about to kill y'all or what? Klein's company. Now, here's what I found out. Hmm, why is nothing ever built down that center? And, and why did Rotunda take so long to get going? And there's an older section, but then there was a big time period where things didn't seem to happen down there. Remember that guy say? Remember? Klein's company kept changing its name to fit his objectives. It started out as Kavanaugh Mercantile in the early 60s and became Kavanaugh Leasing Corporation in 1968. Then having launched Rotunda! Because it's love, baby. It became Kavanaugh Communities Corp. Say that with me. Kavanaugh's Communities Corp. Does that have, doesn't that sound good? Just a name change. Kavanaugh's Communities Corp. In 1970. While this suggested what? Experience developing communities in reality it was mainly a land sales business. So I think we might find out some of the reason why nothing's been built down in that center. And maybe because some of the struggle, this is my opinion, but because it really was a land sales corporation, not really somebody that had a lot of experience in developing communities. Does that make sense? Just my opinion. Even before Rotunda adequately took root, Kavanaugh was directing profits from the Rotunda lot sales that he was selling and putting in, I think, what he really cared about, the casino and hotel business, building business in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Amen. Say. 
So next time you're riding out there wondering, why ain't nothing ever happened down here? Well, probably some casino has the answer up in Jersey. Y'all listening to me, yes or no? Amen. There you go. So there's Rotunda. Do you get a warm, fuzzy feeling when you look at it? You know, not putting it down. I love that area, and I love our area that we've got, and it is unique because you can see it from the sky. I love seeing it from the sky, and the shots that we get of our facility progress is incredible. So there's Rotunda, a little bit of its history. Today, Rotunda has 8,000 lots, 4,500 homes. More than 6,000 owners, and Rotunda boasts about 12,000 residents. You think there might be potential for us, guys? Yes or no? Yes or no? Say. It might be, a, yeah, come on. You think it might be a little potential out there? Amen. And since Rotunda's had this, you know, since its inception, what have you, we've got incredible roads now that are coming through. And uh, you've got Rotunda East Boulevard, Rotunda North Boulevard, which is Sunnybrook. You've got Rotunda West Boulevard. You've got recently the county put a beautiful sidewalk that goes from Fellowship Church all the way to the little park down the way. So I think we've got some incredible opportunities ahead of us. You're listening today. Amen? Come on, some good things are happening. Rotunda's history. Well, guess what, church? You're part of it. You're part of Rotunda history now. Guess why? Because Fellowship Church of Inglewood is the first to build in the commercial center of Rotunda. Okay? Somewhat, 40-something years later, right near that old stake, he put down near that big old water tower, Fellowship Church is coming to town. Amen? Come on. We're pioneers! Come on! Are you kidding me? Say! Listen, pioneer, it's tough to do what we're doing. Are y'all listening? I hope you get that message. Some of you that came from wherever you came from. Well, this ain't where you came from. This is here. This ain't easy. Okay? To do something that's never been done. Say that with To do something that's what? Never been done. Well, I can't believe it's taking so long. How about how long is never? Say, how long is never? Well, I can't believe it takes so long. Well, how long is never, church? Say. If it takes us a while yet, last time I checked, that's better than never. Are y'all hearing the math today? You listening or not? This is a big deal. How many times can a church pop up and it'll be written in the pages of the history of that community probably forever? Fellowship Church can. Amen. I think it's an awesome thing. It's an incredible thing. I think it's probably right in God's timing. This is my opinion. I don't know how God thinks. But I can see those roads there. Everything there. People. Isn't it about people? Yes or no? People are what? They're, they're there. And we're blessed now because Rotunda North really is, in fact, what's the name of that road? Sunnybrook. So really, Rotunda is more than Rotunda. It's East Inglewood. Are y'all hearing me today or not? And then Rotunda East, it's really Gulf Cove. Did y'all hear me or not? And Rotunda West is Placida and Grove City and Boca Grande and Barrier Islands. And we've even got Winchester. It sounds like Northport to me. Y'all hear me or not? Yeah. And 771, you know what that sounds like to me? Sounds like El Jabin, but you know what else it sounds like to me? Sounds like Port Charlotte. Do you see what I'm saying? All roads lead to fellowship. Amen. I'm come on, praise the Lord with me. We have got to stay steady. We're pioneers, guys. We're pioneers. Are y'all listening or not? Did you miss it or not? That's who we are. Now let's talk about it. I've got a message now. I know that was fun right there, but I've got to take you to the Word. And it's got some, it's got some stuff here, and I've got to go with it because we're, we're a church. We've got to preach the Word, not just give history lessons. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually 
And it repented the Lord that He had made man on the earth. And it grieved God at His heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repents me that I have made them. We're going to look at a serious pioneer, and you probably know where I'm going. But Noah, say Noah, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He was a serious pioneer. I'm telling you, you're talking about something never been done. It had never rained. And you're building a what? A boat, an ark, because it's going to what? Rain? It ain't never done that. You are an idiot. Amen? Say, this is a serious pioneer. The Bible says, though, when God looked at mankind, he saw Noah, and Noah found what? Grace in the eyes of the Lord. We'll see a verse later where it says that Noah preached righteousness. There was something God saw. Noah was not perfect. He was a sinner too. But somehow God saw this man. He had grace on him, and this man became righteous in the sight of God, and he preached. Now, when you have found grace, when you and I have found grace, it's required for you and me to give what? You now know why we're building Rotunda in the middle of Rotunda Fellowship Church. Because Pastor Gary Clark has been given grace by God. And the people that attend Fellowship Church have been given grace by God Almighty. And we want other people to have grace. That's why we're doing it. That's why we're doing it. It's not to get on the map. It ain't. We're a pioneer. That ain't why it is. But that's reality. Because it's required of us to give grace when we've been given grace. Do you all hear me today? And I want to do something with my life. And I have done something with my life. But I'm looking forward to having a, a permanent part in the Inglewood community. Something permanent that we can say, that church where we preach the gospel. We preach the gospel here, but I'm excited about the opportunity and the incredible things that we'll be able to do. I don't know, but I know the thing that's going to drive our engine is reaching people for Christ, reaching people for Christ, loving people, loving Jesus, loving people. Amen. That's because we've been given grace. Noah was given grace. Why did Noah build that ark? Because he was given grace. He saw God. He experienced God. And he could get up every day and do what he did. Amen? Yes or no? Wherefore I say unto you, her sins in Luke, which are many, a prostitute, I believe, who was saved, her sins, which are many, they're forgiven, Jesus says, for she loved much. But to whom? Say it with me. Little is the same loves little. I don't expect people who love God a little bit to be a pioneer and reach people for Christ. Did you hear me? I need people who love God much who can look at your life and instead of judging somebody else, you judge your own sorry tale. Because you look at you, who God saved. Amen? Are you hearing me today? And you think like that, and you live like that, and you reach like that, and you care like that, and you give like that. Man, when you've been given grace, it's required that you do what? Give grace. Amen? I'll never forget my mama's face. My mother was a drunk. Also ran around. Not a good person at all. She got saved. And I'd go home at the little church. I'd preach at the church for whatever. Get up and preach. I'd sit by her, and the offering basket would come by. And Mama would look at me. I'd look at her, and she would say these words. you got to give God his first. She became a person of grace, changed, caring for other people. You hear me today? Matter of fact, whether you know it or not, Fellowship Church has my mother's mark on it. Mama loved people. She was a waitress. She loved people. We love Jesus here, and we love who? 
We love people. And it's no accident we serve them some food. Amen? And we give to them like we do. That's who we are, guys. People ask me, are we going to change when we get down to Rotunda? I have no intention whatsoever of changing and people rolling up to our nice facility and, and paying money for what donuts are, the coffee or anything like that. We're going to always be people who give. You understand that? It's who I want to be. Why do I give? Because I've been given so much. You hear me today? So know who you are, buddy. That's who we are. Amen? How many can relate to what I just said? That's who you are. That's what you feel, man. Come on. Noah, he built this sucker because he was given grace. Keep looking. Some lessons from one of the greatest pioneers of God. Raj, I know it's a bunch of stuff. I know. I got off track here, buddy. Some lessons from one of the greatest pioneers. He did something that had never been done before. He prepared the way for others. And listen, he was an adventurer. Keep looking. Keep looking. What's lesson number one? Here it is. Say that with me. Do what? God says do and do it the way God says. That's pioneer lesson number one we learned from Noah. Look at what the Bible says. God said make an ark of gopher wood. I, I researched that. I believe that's pine. My opinion. Okay? I believe it's pine after research. Make the ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark and shalt you pitch it within, within and without with this stuff. And this is the fashion which y'all shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, the height of it 30 cubits. A window shall you make to the ark, and in a cubit shall thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof with lower, second, and third what? So how many stories was it? And thou shalt make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh. We're in the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is under the earth is going to die. But with you will I establish my what? Covenant of grace. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of fowls after their kind, cattle after their kind, every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come into you and to keep them alive. That's your job. And you take unto thee of all food that's eaten. Thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for the food for thee and for them. Say it with me. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Amen? So pioneer lesson number one is do what God says and do, what, and do it how God says what? Do it. And Noah did it all just the way God said. Amen. You're cool so far. How many know this story? You've heard it like a gazillion times. Okay. So it's hard for me to make it all new for you. It's not. This guy was a pioneer. It's incredible what he did. How big was the ark, just in case we get, we, get, we get tired of the Bible sometimes, the stories we've heard, which is a shame. But how big was this? Let's look at the feet. 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high. That's pretty big. It had three stories, so it had about 100,000 total square feet. Now, we have just one floor, okay? But there are some areas tucked in under our stadium seating in the back but uh you know maybe about a third of the size so far of the ark but if it was three stories it might be similar in size do you understand it was the size of approximately 20 basketball courts if you stood it on end it would be the same height as the great pyramid of giza in egypt that's big man the ark was, this is what I really found interesting. The ark was the largest sailing vessel ever built until the early 1800s. Man, for you to build something to stand for about 6,000 years as the record, you're good. Amen? Come on. So that's some serious pioneering. How long did it take Noah to build the ark? How many would pop out a quick answer? How long did it take? Okay. How many? Yeah, most people say 120. Most people say 120. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that also is his flesh. Yet man's day shall be 120 years. 
Let's keep looking. God gave a period of 120 years before his judgment would come when he was talking to Noah. He said it's going to happen in 120 years. But nowhere in the Bible, not one place, does it say that it took Noah 120 years to build the ark. It doesn't say that at all. Okay? A lot of people say it took 120 years, but it doesn't say that. It said when the judgment was coming. Amen? How many when God told you to do something right away, you started? <laughs> Amen? Come on. According to some expert boat-building decipherers, that's my word, it could have been as little as seven years. If he would have got help from other people, it could have happened. In 2,000 years, this, this rascal right there, Johann Ubers, built his own ark, half the size, and it took him two years. That's modern technology and getting the stuff. So it took him at least two years. So here's country boy ingenuity, me. I personally believe it took him more than seven years and less than 120. All right, so there you go. That's a good, solid answer. Here we go. I have no idea. All I really know is did it get done? Yep. And how about this? And did it get done the way God said do it? Yep. That's what I learned from that first point. Serious pioneer, another quick point. Lesson number two. Go ahead and expect to be criticized and even rejected. When you do something that's never been done, keep looking, pop it up. When you do something that's never been done or has been what? Rarely done, expect to be what? And even what? Rejected, guys. That goes along with the pioneering thing. Amen? Say. All right? Look at me. I'm still making fun of Kavanaugh after all these years <laughs> for calling it a Ram Ramonian community. Bottom line is, it worked. He was right, wasn't it? I mean, people love that community, love living there, love being a part of that community. I guess he was right after all, huh? We can make fun of him all we want, but he was right, wasn't he, say? Amen? Come on. Interesting, I tried to study good and find out some answers that I'd never seen before. Hebrews 7 says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not yet seen, he moved with what? Or reverence. He prepared an ark to the saving of his what? By the which he condemned the world. He became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Second Peter says, And spared not the old world. God did not spare the old world, but he saved who? Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of what? Righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Jesus spoke of Noah. He says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the days of the son, coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, they were before the flood, they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were giving in marriage. Basically the idea, it was like life as usual. Life, doing life like they wanted to do life until the day that Noah entered the ark. Life just went on, their normal way of living, doing their sin, doing whatever. They just lived that way until the day he got in. And they knew not until the flood came. And it took them all what? So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. So, did Noah preach? I thought about that question. Did Noah preach? It says he was a preacher of righteousness over in Peter. Okay, so it says that he did preach. Was he a preacher? It says he was a preacher of righteousness. Here's his message, I think. Y'all need to do right. Rain's coming. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to do right. Rain's coming. You hear me now? All right, what a message that would be, right? Come on. Did he preach? Did anyone repent? Someone give me the answer. No. Apparently not. Wow, how sad is that, say? But it made me think... Uh, did God say he was going to save the people if Noah built the ark? Yes or no? No. Did he tell Noah to build the ark for himself and his family? Yes, and the animals. Sometimes we hear these little different views being taught about Noah. That's not necessarily so. I mean, I've been taught he was preaching and nobody repented. Amen? I believe Noah was a good man. I think he spent his time building that ark. 
That's a big old job that rascal had to do. Amen? Do you think he was criticized? It doesn't tell us in Scripture that he was criticized. But if you're going to be a pioneer and do something that's never been done, I'm sure he was criticized. And certainly what he was doing was rejected by the folk. Amen? Just what I'm learning about this man. But are we here today? Here's the question. Are you and I here today because of this faithful pioneer? Yes or no? We always say we came from Adam. You know who you really came from? Take a wild guess. Noah. Pretty cool, isn't it? Aren't you glad Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord? Aren't you glad that Noah cared enough to do what God said to give back to others so that you and I would be on this planet today? Yes or no? We all have a connection to this pioneer. It's our job to pass it on. He was a serious pioneer. Flying, two quick lessons. What's number three? Know that God can handle all the details. If you're going to do something that's never been done, rarely done, these other two points, but you have to have faith in him and trust in him that God can handle all the details, guys. Amen? I've never seen us, I've never built a big old, and I'm not building it now, but I mean, that's a big old building that's going up in Rotunda. It's got a lot of stuff that old Gary Clark, he ain't got no clue of. Amen? Say, I just got to have faith and trust and do my best that God's going to help us. He's going to handle these details. You listening to me, yes or no? Okay? The details. Noah, of every clean beast thou shalt take by thee, sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are, are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also of the air, by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet seven days, and I'll cause it to rain upon the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God commanded Noah. It came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. So, God can handle all the what? Can you imagine Noah trying to figure out how God, how are you going to do all this? Well, God says, you just do what I tell you to do. You understand? Do what I tell you to do. The last lesson of a serious pioneer that I learned from Noah this week was get on board and trust God to open and shut the doors. My job is to get on board. Okay? That's my job. To get on board, do what God's told me to do, feel like I'm called to do. Certainly in his word, we're called to be witnesses, to reach out, to share grace, to give grace to the people, to reach our community for Christ. Y'all listening today or not? My job is to get on board and trust God, not man. Did you hear me? Trust God, not who? Man. Trust God and not who? Man. Trust God and not who? To open the doors and to what? I don't know how God... I did not know how we were going to get the land. I had no idea how I was going to go with the county. I had no idea when I talked to the fire people. I had no idea when we were going to do this. I had no idea when we were going to do that. I had no idea about return. I had no idea about any of this stuff. Y'all listen to me say, all I can do is just keep going forward. I have no idea who's going to be in this church when we get it done. I have no idea how many is going to leave and go somewhere. I have no idea about anything. All I know is this. I'm a pioneer. Doing something. What's the motive? I want to give grace to a community because God gave me grace. You understand, yes or no? I'd like to leave a lasting witness of a non-denominational church. It doesn't have a hang up here and a hang up here and a hang up here. But we hang it all on these two things, Jesus says. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. You love me and you love people. I'd love to see a facility built that that could be the message. Amen? I've got a feeling it's going to be pretty successful. You hear me? I can see it. Did God make all this mess work out? Say, can he make your mess and my mess work out? If we trust him, sure he can. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah, Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons, and they went into the ark. They and every beast after his kind, all the cattle after their kind, every creeping thing uh, after his kind, every fowl after his kind, every bird, every sort. 
They went in unto Noah and to the ark, two and two of all flesh, where is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male, female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord did what? Wow, it gets so scary when you get shut in. You know? I feel that's where I'm at in my life with Fellowship Church. I'm shut in. I ain't got no options. Because I ain't jumping ship. Can't borrow no money. I'm shut in. Sort of scary. Sort of exciting, though, if you're an adventurer. Amen? Come on. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heavens, and they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. Certainly not comparing myself to Noah today. I'm trying to use a story about a pioneer. But I do, I do see this man. I see a lot of things that he did that we still are called yet to do. Amen? Things like that. Here's the beautiful thing. We're done with the message. Well, the guy must have been wore out. Did you know after the flood and things were different, we can talk about the reason why and all that with scientists and people that can explain it better than me, but it never rained up until this time. The earth was like a greenhouse. You know how plants go in a greenhouse. And I believe that explains a lot about long life, about large animals and creatures. I think a lot of it can be explained. That's my view. A lot of scientists feel the same exact way. But the point is, after the flood and after the ark, after he spent all that time, either seven years to 120, we ain't sure, the Bible says he lived 350 years. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? Guys, I'd like to encourage you. Some of you have told me you don't think you'll see Fellowship Church built before you die. To me, I'd be careful saying that. Because you just might. However, if you dig deep and grab some of that pioneering spirit and the Holy Spirit... You just might live a while and see some pretty incredible things happen in the future. That's the choice I choose to make. Amen? Not, oh, man, hey, I'm going to die. How about this? How about look at how incredible God has been, and I'm looking to reach incredible amounts of people for the Lord's glory and see things I've never seen before. I'm excited about it. I mean, to me, that's how I want to look at life because I got it right here in the Bible. Come on. 350 years after the fact. I ain't saying you're going to get that much, guys. But come on, let's be positive and be thinking forward thinking. Amen. Y'all listen to me today. Did you get both tracks of the message we were running today? So the Word of God, but also we're bringing it down to planet Earth where we're living and what we're doing right now. Amen. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Say that with me. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And that is what I'm hoping that other people throughout our community, they're going to find. They're going to find the grace of God. Amen? Because we've been given grace. It's required of us to what? Give it back. Amen? Let's praise the Lord for His Word. Old story from an old book. The Bible! Amen! Fellowship meets every Sunday morning at the beautiful Lemon Bay Performing Arts Center, located on the campus of Lemon Bay High School at 2201 Placida Road in Inglewood, Florida. Our early worship service begins at 9 a.m., and the main worship service begins at 1030 a.m. Between these two worship services, we offer gourmet coffee, fresh juices, pastries, and lots of fellowship free of charge in our hospitality center. If you're looking for a church in the Inglewood area or would like to just pay us a visit, we would love to fellowship with you. For more information, give us a call at 941-475-7447 or log on to fellowshipinglewood.com.
For Pastor Gary Clark and all of us at Fellowship, God bless you.